Hi, I'm going to walk you through a little toy program I wrote in Processing. It's a particle swarm simulator and it's based on an algorithm by Simon Woods which he shared online about four months ago here on the Wolfram Alpha community. Um, the metaphor he used for his algorithm is uh, as follows. You take a number of dancers in random position on the floor, the dance floor, which is like your grid. Um, every one of them chooses one friend, one enemy, and every step, every dancer moves a bit closer to the center of the floor, takes a large step towards their friend, and a small step away from their enemy. enemy. And every no, at random times uh, a dancer chooses a new friend or enemy. So he implemented this algorithm. It's just a particle algorithm, but he uses the dancing metaphor to give you a, an idea about it. He Im implemented it in, in Mathematica, which I don't have, and this is uh, the GIF he shared for his swarm, um, which looks quite nice. And, um, you know, there's lots of little behaviors which, um, if you look uh, at it for a longer time, kind of makes sense. Like these uh, guys start to follow like one kind of a leader dancer, so to speak, and there's a little chain behind it. It's almost like a tree, um, except it swarms around. And there was this whole discussion about it, and somebody shared it on Reddit, where I saw it. And uh, I don't have Mathematica, but I have Processing, because that's open source and free. And I ported his algorithm, and somebody actually took a GIF based on the... <laughs> YouTube upload on the screen capture I made so this by the time you see this this has been recompressed four or five times so it will look like a big mess uh, anyway I promised back then I would share my code which I hadn't done so far so I'll fix that today I, I thought and um, that's this thing except as you can see there's a lot of options and I figured I'd explain what's going on so like the metaphor before, you have friends and enemies. I uh, inc increased the number to two friends and two enemies. Uh, you can turn a friend off simply by setting the step size to zero. It's as simple as that. Um, step to center, well that's the same. The odds of changing context, that's every frame for every uh, follower, also the same. You can increase or decrease this. Um, velocity amplification, that's it amplifies the steps of friends uh, you take towards your friends or enemies, but it ignores the step to center, so it allows you to increase the scale a bit, as you can see. Uh, oh. And um, as Simon Woods explained, he he implemented he added this step to center bit to avoid the swarm from drifting off screen following one of those leaders. So that's uh, but if you. Um, have a circular, if you chain them in a regular way, I'll explain it a bit later, then it turns out that you'll get this kind of ring-shaped patterns very quickly. Um, velocity amplification, okay, for some reason this change hasn't updated in my version. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I confused myself. Velocity damping, this is a, uh, this basically is, um, okay, I have to backtrack a bit. So in the in the explanation Simon used for his uh, algorithm, he had the the particles take one step towards the friend, then away from their enemy. Instead of that, what I do is I I calculate the acceleration. So every frame, uh, the dancer accelerates 1.075 towards one friend friend one, 0 0.95 to friend two, one point etc. and only after calculating all the accelerations it takes the, the total step, one step. It increases its velocity. And uh, this basically says, okay, f from the last frame uh, you remember this percentage of the velocity. So this means it keeps the velocity, which means it starts accelerating like crazy. This means it, it just starts from uh, speed zero every frame. So the reason you want to do this, or you, you might want to do this, is that you get these, um, instead of straight jumps back and forth between enemy uh, friends and enemies, you get these kind of smoother curves. 
and I can show you that later. Um, active particles, well that's kind of self-explanatory. You can increase this to have more particles, you can decrease this to only a few to have less particles. Um, blur fading, uh, I added a bit of blur and a bit of fading because then it sometimes, especially if you have very few particles, it's easier to see what's going on. Uh, I can turn it off, then the, the particles are reduced to a single pixel, which I think YouTube compression will probably compress almost completely away. Um, we'll see. Um, randomize on edges is a tick which... Um, okay, at first I'll explain this part and then this will make more sense, the randomize on edges. So, after Simon uh, shared his algorithm early on, a few people started uh, adding other restrictions and, and changes. And this was one where they, he actually um, made all the friends, instead of randomized, they, they had them in sequential order. So it's like a chain of friends. So friend one follows friend two, etc., etc., and the last friend follows the first one again. But the enemies were still randomized. And in that way you get this chain, but there's also this random repulsion going on, so you get this, yeah, this, this jittery chain. Well, that's kind of fascinating. So, what I added to my algorithm here is the option to... Oh, look, it's kind of uh, smoothed out a bit, which happens over longer times. I added the option to turn this, this chaining on and off per friend and per enemy. And per friend and per enemy, you can change the offset to which friend or enemy it's chained. Uh, this is a floating point number, but it's just it will be rounded down to an integer index. So this is like okay, you fo uh, you f every friend follows the thirty fourth next friend in this case. So if I change this, um, I'll increase the number of particles because then you'll see the effect a bit better. Um, yeah, here you get all these circles. Uh, it it will uh, re kind of randomizes the the their paths a bit again. Except in this case, because I turned it all on, it's all actually fixed, but there's still chaos involved because of the sheer number of particles and the fact that there's... Well, anyway. Um, so by changing that you, number, you can uh, change the swarm behavior on the whole. And by choosing, for example, to have one non-circular enemy... Um, this should not have an influence. That's interesting. I don't. Sometimes it, it moves to the right, which, as far as I know, means. Oh wait, yeah, I get it. Here, uh, there's a little bug. I haven't worked it out yet. If you make the offset of the friend one or f uh, of the circular friends or enemies equal to the f uh, the dancer itself, so basically I'm telling it to step away from itself right now. It can't do that. But because this motion is a floating point number, it still tries to move it, which gives it this weird bias to the right, as you can see. So avoid the zero or the complete full, you know, index. Um, anyway, for example, now I'll, I'll turn on enemy two. Uh, enemy two is not circular, so it's randomized. So that will add a bit of, of randomness to the whole swarm, as you can see. It's actually quite a bit of randomness. Uh, you can kind of counter that by making, for example, the circular friends count stronger. Um, and also, how often they, you randomly choose a new enemy also really influences the, the randomness of the swarm. So you can kind of interactively play with the swarm and figure out what kind of behavior it, it gets as a result. So there's almost nothing you'll get. Yeah, you see you get these nice even lines, swirly and stuff. If you increase that, it becomes a lot noisier. Oh, in this case it's not that visible, but quite often you see that it's quite noisy if you do that. Um, similarly, okay, I'll turn it all off. So now it's it's all, like, almost every other frame, 1 in 10 frames, which is it's like every uh, 6 times every second. Um, I mean, there's 30 frames a second, every 10 frames on average, you'll, well, no, that's not how statistics work. Never mind. Very often, <laughs> you'll randomly change contact, 
now and as you can see it becomes this completely random swarm there's no real pattern to it anymore decrease it to almost to nothing and they'll be locked in friends and enemies as you can see and now they'll just follow and avoid the same enemies but because there's so many of them pushing against each other you still have this sense of randomness because of uh, well you know the famous three particle problem basically um, so yeah the, that's pretty much it for a walkthrough uh, I guess I could play with this a bit longer and see if I can show some interesting patterns for you but that's about it that's all I have to tell about this oh no wait there's one more thing uh, this randomize on edges thing like as mentioned before uh, this whole step to center bit is just to avoid a swarm from drifting off to the side because it follows one leader you quite often you'll get like this one weird circular part which moves up, drifts away and then there's a bunch of them following it and on average it will drag everything away so I'm sure that this will actually happen if I turn this off now there you go um, so I basically added two options I, it might actually be nicer if I in, in, uh, split this into two options either what happens is that it wraps around so if a particle goes off screen this is hardly you can hardly see what's going on now um, so if a particle goes off screen it wraps around to the other side and shows up again this is when it's uh, when this is not set and when it is set as soon as a particle hits the edge of a screen uh, basically is off screen as long as it's off screen it chooses a random partner and as long as most particles are inside the screen that will mean that on average particles who go off that all go off screen will eventually drift back to the center even if you turn this one off so if i turn this off yeah you see them all go back to the center but if the motion is too big then eventually they'll all go off screen anyway so there is that's that's pretty much that i think um, Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's it's quite a neat toy. Uh, I like the algorithm. It's very s simple uh, in its uh, you know in its met the metaphor behind it is very simple. You only have a few other particles to take into account, which simplifies uh, things a lot as well. And uh, you can get some very nifty uh, patterns out of it actually if you get the settings right. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to play with. Okay, so if, by the way, oh yeah, that's the last thing to say. If these are all set, then this has no meaning anymore because you don't randomize these friends and enemies when they're set to a certain friend or enemy with this, right? So, um, that's all I have to say about this, I think. So, yeah, I'll, I'll throw this on GitHub. Um, it's horribly ugly code because I'm not a developer but just a guy who dabbles in processing because it's fun and um, you can just download the code put it in processing and run it uh, it requires no any no, no other libraries whatsoever so yeah that's that's it I think thanks for watching Are you still here? I'm just playing with it now, right? Okay, so, um, let's see, what, what did I notice from playing with this quite a lot? Um, hmm. No, nothing comes to mind. There's lots of little different patterns, but 
And maybe I can get it to show you that, that thing I mentioned earlier where it kind of looks like a, almost like a tree, um, which makes perfect sense when you think about it. Uh, so I, in that case I have to turn off, it's not circular anymore, I have to turn off the auto of changing contacts. Uh, I'll turn off. So, okay, so for now it, they, um, uh, the particles only step towards their friends. These friends are not circular, uh, they're not randomized. Uh, how did I do that last time? Oh, now I remember. Yeah, you set it to one with circular. That's the easiest option. Uh, except that the interface isn't precise enough. This I'll I'll just have to. Uh, whoa, what's that? Oh, right, Aflux. It's your friend, but not during <laughs> screencasts. The same before an hour. Okay, so I'll try to get circular friend set to one. I'll just cut this later in uh, Premiere. Okay, yeah, you don't have enough precision at this scale, so I'll just reduce the amount of particles to very low. And now it's set to one. So let's see, this should work. Right. Right, so now it's a chain of, of particles following the, following the next one. And as you can see, it still isn't quite uh, circular motion. It should smooth itself out quite quickly, actually. Uh, especially if you increase the damping. I think that's actually kind of fascinating. Even when there there's only one connection and they're all chained to the next one, it still doesn't automatically smooth out. Um, I think this is this this is more rounding errors than anything else. What's happening actually? But um, yeah. So uh, how did I do that last time? Because you can really get these. enemies and friends very visible somehow. Um, maybe it wasn't with circular. I'm trying to think of how I did that. Because uh, I think I think if you if you work out the the statistics behind it then it's kind of inevitable that you will end up with one leader which has a bunch of followers and they have a bunch of followers and they have a bunch like there's more followers than leaders which which means you'll end up with one leader or relatively speaking a few leaders kind of leading the whole group forward but uh, you know and and whether or not you can get that to be visible depends on how you tweak the settings and I'm kind of trying to remember how I did that last time uh, anyway, so here you can see a bunch of friends, like they, th this is like a closed loop. But uh, presumably they all have enemies which are here. So none of these are enemies from each other, but they are do have enemies in this swarm. At least that's what I think. I haven't, you know, I I don't know under hood which connections are made there, but that's the only way it makes sense to me. So they, these are uh, pushed away by this, but they attract each other, and there's no enemy in it. So this forms a closed loop which is pushed out of the center, which is the majority of the swarm. Uh, so that explains that behavior. Um, hmm, let's see, I'll just add it. Yeah, there you go, and then eventually one of them stops being repulsed and it moves back.
I'm really trying to figure out how I did that last time. That that figuring out how the that tree behavior was so clear. Uh, maybe I used a lot less. Anyway, okay, I don't remember. Maybe someone else can figure this out again, how to do that tree-like behavior. Uh, what I can show you, for example... Okay, so obviously this is a huge factor on the shape of the swarm. Um, and So this is a force that moves all particles to the center. I don't remember if it was a percentage or a fixed step. Um, uh, probably a percentage. And it uh, it counteracts the repulsive force to move apart, so that's basically this part. So, yeah, as you can see, the stronger I make this, the more it goes outwards. Um, the stronger I make this, the stronger it goes, to, the more it goes to the center. Um, and as mentioned earlier, these two sliders do not affect the step to center bit, so the higher I increase this, the more this goes outwards as well. And oddly enough, even if I don't have any um, Repulsion, only attraction, that still uh, applies. And it's it's uh, pretty obvious, it's because of overshoot. So um, the particles accelerate and they overshoot through the center and then move outward again. At least I think that's what's going on. Uh, so even when it's randomized. And... And you can kind of see that because, it, like in this case, there's no real path to just appear and disappear. Um, so, yeah. And... Uh, and, and and that's why, for example, this one, this, this damping effect, uh, has an even bigger influence because that means it keeps instead of just steps back and forth, it, it has these smooth paths, like I mentioned earlier. Okay, so, uh, you can tweak these settings and you can get, like, very spherical looking um, rings for example or
and look at these like circular or how do you say that? that this zigzag that's going on here I'm not quite sure, it's like it's a propagation of some kind of wave and what might not be obvious is that actually um, this is uh, you know how you can like use a stroboscope to make it look like something is standing still even though it's rotating very fast have you ever done that kind of trick so if if you have a stroboscope it goes uh, like 30 times a second and then at the same time you have something rotating 30 times a second and it looks like it's standing still even though it's still rotating 30 times a second well that's actually kind of going on here as well it looks like this this is the same particle moving slowly but actually it's like um, by every frame the the whole bunch of particles shifts like I don't know ten hundreds or multiple of them at once and you can see that because as soon as you tweak the settings you su suddenly see this kind of explosion of one particle into a multiple uh, or what appears to be one particle into multiple so, yeah, there's that. Um, what other interesting thing have I noticed about uh, these these swarms about playing with it? Um, yeah, one thing I noticed: if you have two friends and one enemy, um, and here you have like they about counter each other, right? Because there's like two two friends of, well, two, not two and a half actually, but this is a bit more. So what you get is, um, you get two opposing poles somehow. I'm not quite sure why. It, it, the effect is stronger or weaker depending on how how small the odds of changing contacts are. But um, it's like these particles, they really uh, collect in, in like two clusters opposing each other and they go back and forth between them um, the reason for that I guess is because they kind of they're connected I mean they're all connected with each other as soon as one particle moves then every other particle that's connected to it moves uh, kind of gets attracted along indirectly um, because if particle A is attracted to particle B, which is attracted to particle C, then the movement of particle C does and indirectly affect particle A. And as long as every particle is connected through this kind of chain, you get this uh, randomness. But somehow you still get this structure of two opposing poles if you have well, like one enemy and two friends. If you if you increase two friends, then you know that that order is gone. That structure is gone again. Uh, if you make the difference between the two friends too big that also tends to uh, make the poles dissipate um, if you make the, the the context change too often well that you know removes any uh, semblance of order from the whole equation okay I think I've said pretty much everything I can think of about this so uh, well, thanks for watching. I'll cut this down in the YouTube editor, I guess. So, um, as I said, I'll upload this to GitHub. Uh, I mean, the, the the source code, not the executables, because I don't see the point. Just copy and paste it into processing, and you can run it yourself. Bye!